Right. Even though I've called this the Aegis intro to modeling, um, there's nothing wrong with being an idiot. You know what I mean? I'm an idiot myself. And I like to embrace my inner idiot. But in all seriousness, um, there's nothing wrong with not knowing, knowing stuff. You know, the beginning of wisdom is understanding that you know nothing at all. You know nothing, Jon Snow. If you might have noticed with a lot of my tutorials lately, especially lately, I've been using grease pencil a lot. And I really love the grease pencil, which is basically a 2D, 2D tool. However, I feel that the grease pencil, um, the great add-on, not add-on, the great tool grease pencil, the true power of grease pencil only works, not only works, but I think you're missing the trick if you don't try and utilize it with 3D stuff. So learning 3D with grease pencil is important. So that's why in the future on my channel, I'm gonna be doing a lot more 3D stuff mixed with 2D. And I'm trying to introduce you 2D guys who are kind of scared of getting into 3D. Uh, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not that hard. It's just a little bit of dedication, trying to introduce you guys so that we can merge those two disciplines, grease pencil and 3D. And you know, you're building up your skill set over time. Another thing I'm going to be dealing with in my channel, which I'll talk about it, I'm going to, I'm going to upload a whole different video on this one. But I'm also going to be um, dealing with, uh, we're not going to just be using Blender, we're going to be using Maya. Uh, we're going to basically, what, what I'm going to be doing in this, these, uh, in, the, in future videos is we're going to be using Maya for 3D animation, rigging, etc. And we're going to be using Blender for modeling, sculpting, and obviously the grease pencil uh, side of things. So that's just something that I want to, I, I just feel that um, Blender, as I say, I'm not, I'm not a fanboy. Blender, in my opinion, for 3D animation is, uh, is, is not a superior to Maya. And what I want to try and do with, with my tutorials is um, how to equip you, especially the newer users, equip the newer users with the abilities. Say, for example, you want to get a job in the industry. I think if you know Maya and if you know Blender, it, you know, modeling, sculpting and even grease pencil, it's going to equip you better to get get a job in the industry and that's what we're aiming for we're aiming for you a for you to get a job in the industry and b also um if you're independent uh i like to consider myself an independent studio um to be able to use the maya and blender together but anyway i've gone off a tangent as per usual let's try and get back on point so right we are talking about the egypt's intro to modeling so when you open up Blender, obviously you're going to be faced with this uh, this offensive box. Now, for once, we're not going to delete this offensive box. We're going to have a we're going to analyze it. We're going to do a deep dive into what what uh, what what um, this box is about. Now, box when you when you when you deal with 3D modeling, you've got um, the object is basically made up of first off, it started off with vertices. So let's have a look at what a vertex is. So if we just went to um, edit mode, you see these icons here, this is your vertex. So you've got for a box, you've got, that's a vertex point and that's a vertex point. And then when you have um, a number of vertices together, four vertices, it becomes a, uh, let's, let's go through it in, in, in line. So you've got vertex and then you've got from vertex, you got an edge. Now this is the edge. Obviously, it's, it's, I know it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, then you got edges, and then when you got your four edges, you got a face. See this point here? That means that it's a, a, a face. Now, so you've got that. So that's the the concept of three D. Now, obviously, three D you can move your object in 
three D space because it's a three D object. You got now usually let's just again let's talk about if you're going to get into three D. Um, let's have a talk about. Um, you're going to hear people talking about X, Y, and Z a lot. Um, X is usually um, X is not usually the the proper X, Y, and Z terminology is meant to be. X from side to side, Y up and down axis, Z in the distance. Now for some reason, you know, forward and backwards. Now for some reason, I don't know why, if it's just like some in-house joke or whatever, but for some reason Blender doesn't use that terminology and I, and I just think it's, they, sh they should they should have, should have followed the what every other 3D program uses and the mathematical uh, you know what? What math? I'm not a mathematician, but the kind of the the, the standard foundations for X one, what it means. But for some reason, they use in Blender they use Z as up. You see that blue and blue hair? It's Z is up. So, but so that's one of the terminologies we want to talk about. So, so that understanding that is important. So that's let's we tick that one off on the box. Now, what I'd say, what I've done is. I, I don't like to be too scripted because I just think it's just too boring. You don't want to hear someone just like sounding like, you know, a tutor from a Ferris Bueller. You want to, you want to, you, you, you want it, you know, to, to feel like you're talking to a normal person. Um, well, I'm, I'm not totally normal. I am subnormal, but kind of, you get the drift. Just a normal kind of bod that you meet down the pub or whatever. It's a normal guy that you can talk to. So I'm going to try and not to be too scripted. But however, like I said, I've written down a couple of points that I feel that are important. So um, let's talk about hard surface modeling. So you might, as I say, when you get when you start delving into hard surface modeling, I mean, I mean the three D, the three D realm. You're gonna hear people say, "Oh, I'm gonna do some hard surface modeling." Da da da. da. What, what's hard? Hard surface modeling is basically when you're doing, um, you know, you're modeling spaceships. Uh, robots and whatever you know like kind of hard you know like boxy type shapes or you know spaceships or even not it doesn't have to be boxy it could be like you're designing a car you know and you want that sh nice streamlined shape as opposed to organic mod modeling so they usually call it hard surface modeling so there's that um right and another and another Thing that you're going to come across is um, especially this is this this terminology especially for games so say for example you're uh, creating a game now if you're if you're creating a game and your model isn't correct you're gonna it's gonna cause you a lot of problems game designing games and that are basically pretty hard anyway hang on a minute let me just double check that I'm recording yeah um, modeling for games you have to get it right, otherwise you're jumping backwards and forwards and whatever. So basically, your topology, and again, this is another word to use, topology, which basically means your model, the faces on the model need to be nice and clean. Now, when we talk about clean modeling uh, and clean topo topology, we're usually talking about faces. Okay, let's, let's look at a bad, a bad modeling example. For say you was creating a game character, so if we had this face here, and then um, let's just extrude it, and then if I delete this face and this face and that face, and let's just delete this one as well. And then say for example we've got this this model here. And it's one, it's, it's one object, and let's, let's just duplicate it again, to show up, make it really bad. Now, if you've noticed there, even in Blender, when we duplicate it, it starts throwing up these errors, like when we rotate it, I don't know if you can see it on this, on this screen, if it's gonna display it that well in, um, in YouTube, but you see that shimmering. That's basically bad topology, because you've got two. The computer can't work it out. It's basically saying you've got two faces together, 
and the computer doesn't know which order to render them at so it, it's, it's basically confusing it so you've got that another issue that will come across this this is kind of bad topology is say for example you used to model your character and you put bones in this character you know like you know you started uh, rigging etc when you rig it would start it would mess up um, when you rotate your bones etc so these are the type of things that you come across so you, you these are things you want to avoid doing with your models overlapping um, models overlapping Right, another terminology you're gonna you're gonna hear so if if you're new to 3D, the world of 3D is a low poly model, high poly model. Basically, a high poly model is if when you've got lots of faces. So, for example, uh, let's just make this a high poly model. So, if we went to the modifier and then we add a mod modifier, and then we had a, a multi resolution model and subdivide it a couple of times, and let's just show the wireframe now if you look at this this model here now this is a high polygon model object see those little squares these are we can click on each individual face as well this is a high polygon model yeah now if we add a cube that's a low poly model you've only got a couple of faces on it yeah so that's the difference between a low poly and high poly model so what's the difference you might be wondering well why well, what's the big deal well basically what it is in um, the computer world um, the computer the CPU or the GPU uh, the graphics processor or whatever um, it can only render, uh, depending on how much memory, whatever, the computer capacity, it can only render a, a, a certain amount of polygons before it runs out of memory. So especially in the olden days, you'd, 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 the characters that artists used to create would be low polygon models. Um, so if you, I don't know if you, how old you are ever, but or if you look at the older models that you, you see in Zelda and things like that, if you notice the characters are really hard edges and kind of, uh, how do you put it, they're not really that detailed. And the reason why they're not detailed, like the Cybertruck, you know, where, where people take the mick out of uh, Elon Musk's Cybertruck, you know, that, that, that straight lines. It's basically so that the computer doesn't have to deal with so many, um, too much processing power okay so hopefully now you're familiar with some of the terminology that you you hear some of these propeller heads throwing around like boolean objects and flip normals and etc etc et so now we're going to deal with the meat of this uh this tutorial which i wanted to show you when i talked about right at the beginning of this uh this tutorial which is basically about um this carver add-on and this Carver add-on, which ships with a blender, so you don't have to download anything, um, is really useful for Boolean operations and non-destructive workflows. I'll discuss non-destructive workflows as I, as, I, as I show you how to use this tool. So first of all, off the bat, let me show you how to use this tool. If we go to um, Edit, Preferences, and then we just go, if you, scroll down to add-ons make sure add-ons is activated and then just type in carver here and then make sure this box is activated so you've got object carver and this will enable the carver add-on in your blender tool in your in the blender program now if we click on here the most important thing you want to look at is how to get started with it and if we click here, you press Control Shift and X to begin to carve a, a specific model. And then you've got your keys uh, to do. I'm not going to go through the whole of this. I'm going to just go through some of the some of the stuff. I would suggest that you have a play with it yourself. Um, but I'm going to just give you a rough a rough uh, idea how to use it. So and then you've got your documentations as well. If you're anything like me, you don't read the documentation. I didn't. 
documentation that I didn't read yet. And if you're a real propeller head, you're going to read the report, report above. No, no, not propeller head. If you really want to help with uh, Blender, you, you're going to report a bug, which is great. So anyway, let's let's get started on this on this baby. So if you're going to boolean an object, it's usually the best practice is usually to keep so you know where you're up to. Is maybe have it in uh, in your front facing view, so it's nice and square and flush. So if you was to press, which it says Control Shift and X, and you 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 do it, you do that. What happens is uh, you get this icon here. Now this isn't your um, your carver tool. This is just to create a, a rectangle. So we don't want to do that. So I just but I just thought I'd show you because you might you might be a bit confused as to oh I'm using it. It's not it's not it's, what's this? I'm just creating rectangles. That's not what I want to do. If you want to create a rectangle, yeah, then press Control Shift and X, and then you can create a rectangle if you want. But we we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to use this carver tool. So what you want to do first and foremost is click on the object that you want to carve and then press Control Shift and X. And then you get this whole uh, different menu thing comes up. Now, say for example, you wanted to make a, a, a Boolean in this object. All we do is click down with your mouse and you've got a rectangle that comes up. But this time, this is actually going to be making a Boolean into your object. So if we click down, see that? It's made a, a nice uh, Boolean object into it. You want to click again, let's make a couple more. And then when we're happy with whatever Boolean shape we've, we've created, so we just right click with your mouse and let's have a look at what we've done. See that? So you can you can use it to, 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 to make really sexy shapes. Okay, so you don't always have to make um, with Carver. You don't. You're not just stuck with making rectangles. You know, for Boolean operations, you can actually use circles and there's other brushes as well. That I suggest you explore. So let's just show you. Uh, say, for example, we wanted to make a circular hole in this object. If we uh, boot this up again, and then if you press, you got cut type here. Now to, to scroll through your cup types, you just press spacebar. So if we just say, for example, scroll through it, you've got line and then we've got circle. Now let's just go for circle. Now, if we want to create a circle, all we do is make sure that it's on circle. And now if I was to see what I've done now, I've just created a, a new circle. And then right click and that goes off of it and then now we can see that we've created a circle now if you you know we talked about high polygon and low polygon um, earlier on this is kind of semi low polygon the you know the, the the number of vertices the faces now if we wanted to make this like higher resolution the high resolution of circle um, again let's scroll to circle see subdivisions so set to 40 and the, the hotkey to scroll between the subdivision is W and X. So to lower it, I'm assuming it's W, which is, and then to, to higher it is X. So, and now if we then make a, a square, I mean a, a circle again, but using this higher subdivision. Now, if we look at, if, if we do, if we look at, see that? It's nice and smoother, smoother subdivisions. Now, that's pretty cool for doing stuff. Now, I just want to show you one other thing. As I said, I'm not going to go through every. I would again suggest you explore this 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 add-on yourself. But I'm going to show you another uh, important aspect of this this add-on, uh, which is used for non-destructive workflows. What that basically means is non-destructive in in um, blender usually you have a modifier so that you're not messing up you can always revert back to your older model or you, it just gives you a bit more flex flexibility when people say non-destructive workflow so let's just add another a cube um, and then let's just boot up this uh, tool here 
tool again. Now, click on your modifier icon here, your spanner icon. Sorry, let's click on it first. And then, now that it's selected, now let's make sure we click on the object and then let's boot this up again. Control, control, shift and action member. Now, you see this apply operations queue is on. Now, if we turn that off by pressing the Q key, look what happens now. So let's gonna, we're gonna create another uh, box. Now, if you notice it's created this square here, outline black square. And also it's, it's in your modifier, you've got this panel here. So we right click now. Now, what we can do now is we can move this so we can position it where we want it. So that's really, really cool for you to be doing your, your models. So that's a really cool thing. And we can do it again. And then if we just uh, apply it, we can do, obviously do the same thing with the circles. So if we then um, space bar to move, so we've got to circle again. And then if we create a, um, make sure apply operations is off. And then if we create another one and right click, and then we look at it again, we can move it and position it. So I suggest you have a play around with that carver tool. You have a play around, read the documentation, have a look at, look at it, and you can do some really sexy stuff with it. Um, and I think it's really useful for, you know, like hard surface modeling, etc. All right, you Rogans, that's going to be it for the day, I reckon. So uh, have a lovely weekend. I'm out. Laters.